happy go lucky guy. I don't know, do you use them somewhere? Um, the yeah. bicycle course. Yeah, 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 there we go. And the pretty last year. There we go. <laughs> I get around. <laughs> oh no, you killed him. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> don't do that, Shane. He had a lot of stress earlier. Now I'm sorting this out and see if we can get this working. Oh, awesome. Obviously, I'm from Bay Ridge, Victoria. Um, and I do a lot of cutouts. Um, just like a, a lot. <laughs> so, uh, during peak season, I'm doing anything from two to three a day um, cutouts. So I, I'm a very busy beaver. Um, but I don't know everything. Um, I've learned so much from all these little trips I do all over the state. We work for Beeline, Telstra, the Defence Force, and the CFA, as well as just normal people as well, um, and heaps of cancels. Uh, I used to be a builder, um, believe it or not, but my wife decided, that, well, she was a beekeeper, she decided that she wanted me to start helping her. And then we got so busy, I had to choose to be a builder or a beekeeper, and beekeeping is so much fun. Yeah. I, make, I make a lot less money, but I love life. <laughs> um, over 200 successful cutouts at cutout stage. I say that because, you know, later, sometimes you might give them a scond or something. Um, I've had two fails in my time doing cutouts. Uh, one was when I was really new to doing cutouts. I borrowed a friend to be vacuum and he didn't really care that if it killed bees and he didn't tell me that it killed bees. And so I used his bee back all happily, opened the bee back at the end and the hive was dead. Um, that was very traumatic. I actually, my wife and I, I guess we're gentle souls and we cry when our client dies. <laughs> um, so we were traumatised, swore we'd never use bee vacuum again. Um, but we've since worked out a way to be back into work. And the other one was where, again, really early in the process, uh, did a cutout, closed it all up, forgot to open the ventilation on top, drove home, and within an hour, the hive was dead. Um, this, the stupidity. Um, everyone makes mistakes, and I've made mine as well. Um, okay, so, audience question. Why would you want to relocate these? <coughs> you can throw some answers. There, there's there's, a, there's a, a few main reasons. The builders want to uh, off the site, possibly, yeah. Safety. Safety, yeah. Keep them alive. Keep them alive, yeah. They want them off the front gate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. uh, okay. Um, to where the honey is. So, firstly, there's feral hives versus many hives. Um, why you want to relocate the feral hives is we shouldn't technically have a feral population of bees in Australia. Um, they're, they're not native to Australia. Yes, we need them for our um, pollination because we have a European diet, but they can, a lot of them, well, not a lot of them, a percentage have diseases and they can't be checked for diseases. So they carry diseases to our managed hives. Uh, it's amazing how many times I come across disease in um, doing relocations. So I've encountered AFB, I've encountered heaps of EFB, EFB 10 times this season. So it's, it's out there, and um, by having feral colonies, they spread it. Also, when we get Varroa, feral colonies will be the ones that spread it really quickly and get wiped out. A lot of other countries where we've got Varroa, their feral populations are almost non-existent now, so we won't, I'll be out of job. Um, but let's hope we don't get Varroa. Um, of the so disease and swarm prevention, obviously, because a healthy feral bee population will pump out between one and three swarms a year. So uh, we don't want them to keep spreading. Okay, matters of legality. Does anyone know if anyone's ever been successfully sued in Australia regarding bee cutouts or swarm collection? Anyone? It's 50 50 chance. Give it a go. Oh, you've got a, a, dot, a, a, a shape of death. Okay, he's right. No one's so far been successfully sued. It's going to happen. <laughs> okay. it, 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 we're becoming all the leg legiticus or whatever word is. Like I'm, I'm shocking with English words. Um, and it will happen eventually. Okay, do you need insurance to do cutouts and swarms? Collections? Another 50 people. Yes! Well done. Okie dokie. <laughs> 
what you want with your insurance is um, at least $10 million. Uh, a lot of the companies I work for now are asking me for to up it to $20 million. Um, you want it to be current and it's got to cover relocation of beehives and catching of honeybees more. <coughs> okay. um, so that they're, they're what you're wanting on your insurance if you're doing cutouts and swarm collection. Okay. Uh, but let me go back. There's one thing I should mention is if you don't isolate the area, so if you're going to do a cutout and you don't put up caution tape and have signs up and someone gets stung <coughs> and it goes to court and you're the, you're the test case and you lose, your insurance is worthless because the insurance company will not cover you if you haven't isolated the area. It's the same as if you leave your car unlocked and someone steals it. Your insurance company is not, not going to cover you. Um, it's the first thing I... More, uh, insurance broker told me. So um, even though you've got insurance, if you don't try to seclude people from coming into the area you're doing the payout or swarm collection and something goes wrong, you, you're broke because the insurance company's not going to do anything for you. Um, so be aware of <laughs> um, the point there. Okay, this equipment. Ooh. Okay, evolution of payout frame. When I first started, I thought I'd make myself make it really, really easy. I made wire frames that you could just lay the honeycomb in, and then you close it up, and oh, we've made cutouts so quick and easy. But then you put it in the hive, and within three weeks, you can't pull any frames out because the bees join everything to the wire, and the only way you're going to get them out is if you pull the whole block out. Um, it's a nightmare. <laughs> Literally, but a plastic version as well. Okay, then we went to wire um, frames. So you're, again, you lay them in, you undo the wire somehow, yeah, and much, much better because the bees don't um, attach everything to everything. But then you've got to come back later and take all the wires off, which is really annoying. So what you can do. Behind. You get your blank frame and you get your number 35 rubber bands and let's hope these don't break. Okay. You string from one corner to the other and one corner to the other and you've got your, your base and then once you've laid your comb in, you do, do the front and then if you need some extra support, you just put it in there. The great thing is the bees take the rubber bands on themselves. <laughs> Okay. Makes life so much easier. Okay, uh, love my toys. Love my toys. Okay, let's see. If, oh no, okay, so I'm going to have to go. Okay, so thermal camera. Okay, um, I don't expect all you guys to have, and girls to have a thermal camera, um, but if you want one, you can get a Fleur One, which is only like $200. Um, there's a beekeeper on Beekeeper's Victoria uh, Facebook page, I think, that sells them. Um, they're really good for hobbyists to check your hive in winter because you can see the heat signature in your hive and you'll know if um, <coughs> it's a strong week without having it lifted or moved it or anything. But for me, it lets me see through, I've got obviously a little bit more expensive one, I can see through brick, I can see through trees. I can't see through mirrors or tiles, which is really annoying because it works on vibration. But thermal cameras are fantastic. Where a thermal camera doesn't work, like a yeah. stethoscope, we go old fashioned. <laughs> uh, the wonderful uh, auto mechanics know what this is. It's part of a periscope camera. So, so you can go down into your um, hives and have a little look see around. Okay, absolutely love that. And then uh, the best toy of them all. This, because I used to be a builder, I've got some fun ones. This is an mortar remover for when you're doing brick cutouts. So it takes out the mortar between the bricks and you can then just pull the bricks out without breaking bricks. Um, and really easy to put them back together. But I love my bricks. Seriously. Okay, now the bee bag. As I said, I had a disaster with bee bag and I swore never to use it until I worked out how to make a, another one. My bee bag is really rough because I have to keep replacing it. If I do a hive that's got a disease, um, even AFB or EFB, 
I've got to burn my bean mm. after I'm finished. I can't just stop the cut out. I've still got to get everything out, but then I've got to destroy all my stuff. Um, so for mm. AFB, I've got to destroy my stuff. EFB, I can treat and whatnot. But, um, so, as I said, it's rough, so it can be burnt base with a slope. Thank you, Dakes. Can't you irradiate the vacuum point? It's pointless. You do? Okay. Uh, it's just not worth it. Like, the, the price, like I've been to Danny Nong, I went to Danny Nong once and the price just wasn't worth it. And then if there's any skerrick of honey in there, they won't do it. So, yeah, anyway, that was just my experience. Okay, I'm not, you feel free to do it yourself. Uh, okay, your hive box goes on top that, that you've cut your uh, bee, bee hive into. Okay. Um, so obviously I vacuum at the end of the cutout because I've already, I'm vacuuming into the hive that I've already cut them into. That goes. Then you have a filter. This prevents the bees from getting into the body of the vacuum. Okay. Um, yeah. Hose. Uh -huh. Nice long hose. Can anyone tell me why it's clear? Why the hose is clear? Yes, because if you get a blockage in your hose, mm. you don't know it if it's not um, clear and you start trying to pull your bee back in the part and it's problems in your hose. Um, or, so it's all, all really good to have a clear one. And then the lid goes on top. This end goes over to the vacuum. Um, even though that vac's got a variable flow control on it, I use a honey gate as a um, flow device. Um, now, the only thing I've got wrong here is I never vacuum with just one box on. So if I've done a cutout and I've got two, two boxes of material, I always put a third box on. Um, you always put one box on more than you need and then you can take it off later. But if you try to get them all into that smaller space, you overheat your bees. Okie dokies. Um, I don't use bee brush because the bees try to sting it, they try to um, get all stuck in it. Weirdly enough, I just use spatula. Um, they can't sting it, they can't put the, it um, gets uh, entangled on it, and it works just as well as a bee brush, honestly. Um, and then, obviously, you can scoop bees like there's no worry with it once you've finished the cutout and just dump them into the hive. They all stick together like a mini swarm. Um, if you're doing cutouts, you want knives that have got flex, okay? Um, because if they're too rigid and the all the times nice and compact. Um, a knife with flex, you can flex it in and cut smoothly against their surface. Um, whereas if it's rigid, you can't flex it and cut along the top of the cone. Um, oh, okay, you've got plastic queen cages or the steel <coughs> queen cages. Plastic queen cages are absolutely useless, okay? Particularly if you want to leave the queen in, um, in a cage um, during the, after the cutout um, in the box because you put the lid on top, it opens up because of how wide that is and it releases the queen before you want her out. Yeah. The, these ones don't release the queen. They're also narrow enough that you can put them down between the frames, spread the things and the queen sits there. Um, the metal ones are awesome. Um, a note for swarm collection, I don't know how many of you know this, the queen's never inside the swarm, she's running around the outside. So whenever I go to collect a swarm, I just watch the swarm until I see the queen, pick her off the swarm. Um, so that, like I can be five metres up a tree with just a queen cage, grab her off the swarm, bring it down, and within an hour they're all in the box. I don't have to carry a box up a tree or whatnot. Um, just something some people don't know. Um, the watercolour I've already shown you. Um, aha. I'm, even though I'm a commercial beekeeper, said small, I only run 200 hollows, um, we don't use queen's glues, except after a cutout. So for a week after a cutout, we'll have a queen's glue between the um, bottom board and the first box, so that should the bees decide they want to scold, the queen can't leave with them, they come back. So, so, so. I tried that, yeah. um, and I still had a, a swarm at sconed, and I've read that when queens prepare to swarm, they skinny down and they become a bit thinner. Usually, so my yeah. theory was that, that she actually she got, got out through the queen <laughs> as well. So I, I, I have tried that and it failed on me at least once. Fair enough. Uh, I've had 
quite a few try to abscond, um, then, but they always come back. One thing with cutouts is don't put all the honey that's in the hive in the cutout. The, the hive, because when you expose a hive during a cutout, the bees start eating honey like there's no tomorrow because they think they're going to have to leave. If you fill up the hive with honey as well and have no space for them to put that honey they've eaten, they'll just want to leave because they can't, they, they need to get rid of the honey that they've got uh, been eating. Um, so what we do is we take out almost all the honey, we'll crush it down and then feed it back to them um, rather than just put it all in there in one hit. Okay, quarantine. Can someone tell me what they think quarantine is? Take them away from another bee, please, for a while. Correct! There we go. You'd be amazed how many city people give the wrong answer. Um, why is it important? Biosecurity. Biosecurity disease. Biosecurity disease, exactly. Um, even though we're not in the suburbs, do you think you can quarantine anybody in the suburbs? Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, really. I say no. My wife says yes. Um, Suburb beekeepers say yes because as long as it's away from their own hives, but they don't care about other things. <laughs> um, I'm lucky, I live in the country, we're on the side of Mount Aspen, um, and we've got three quarantine acres around the state. Uh, one for hives we don't think have any disease, but we still put them through quarantine. Uh, another one for hives that we have a suspect, and then the third one is way whoop whoop, where there's nothing around that we know has got a disease. Um, whether it's AFB or AFB, because um, we're still going to go through all the processes. Um, so, yeah, disease and biosecurity, obviously, really important if you're doing cutouts. Okay, back east. Um, can anyone tell me if that's a bit suspicious? Oh, let me move the box so you can see. Uh, does that look suspicious to anyone? Yeah. Um, AFB, um, if you're interested. That was down in Geelong. Um, but anyway, okay, safety first. <coughs> we always wear um, B suit gloves, safety boots when doing a cutout because we don't know the temperament of the hive before we've opened it up. It's different if you're working with your own hives, that you know all the temperaments and you name each individual hive. But when you're working with feral colonies, you don't want to make a mistake. Um, some of them are extremely aggressive. You expose them and you'll have 50 stings in seconds. Um, some of them are just so gentle, you can work without anything, but you don't know what's what. Okay. Um, we use scaffolding, obviously, for higher up cutouts. Okay. Doink, doink, The caution tape I've already mentioned. Signage. Okay. Are these things all really important? If you go back to the insurance question, yes, they are. Okay because you want to be covered. Okay. What's the area to be covered with the, um, the tape and signage incidentally? We, it? Weirdly enough, it's not that big. You only need to exclude three metres from, from the hive. It's not that big. You still get moms, because humans, and, and I'm in this category, I'm human, are dumb, and they go through the tape. They go, oh, this looks really interesting. They lift the tape and come on in. You can't stop <laughs> idiots. <laughs> um, and, and I've seen them, they've come in, gone and stung and run. <laughs> it's just crazy. Okay, so that's me on a scaffolding. Note the scaffolding's strapped to the tree as well, so it can't move. Um, you've got to think of all those things. Okay, thanks. Uh, How much do you charge for a cutout? Uh, $88 an hour, plus travel. Um, so I've, I've done some cutouts that have been 15 hours long. Um, I've done some big ones, but we'll get to some videos in a moment. Asbestos. Mm. <laughs> okay. Unless the um, you need special equipment to do asbestos, we won't even do it anymore. Um, the equipment to maintain the filters and everything <coughs> is so expensive. And um, then there's the damage, and you break asbestos, it, there's a big risk. Yeah. So if you know something's got asbestos in it, um, walk away. Like, just don't do it. Seriously, it's not worth it. Um, you can do a, a burn test on asbestos, so you find a piece that's already broken. Don't break a piece, find a piece that's already broken. And they've got fine uh, fibres along the edge, and you put a match or cigarette lighter to the asbestos. It, um, the fibres won't burn, they'll glow. Okay, that's um, asbestos. It will tell you if it is asbestos, but it won't tell you if it's not asbestos. So if you're suspicious, um, just don't, just walk away. It's not worth the risk. Um, 
Uh, it's also called, a lot of people go, oh no, we don't have asbestos, we've got fibrous cement sheeting. It's the same thing, mm. okay? Um, now, can you go show the asbestos video? Um, you go uh, right. close the PowerPoint, shrink the PowerPoint and open the asbestos video to show you. I got called up um, just short of Mildura to do a relocation. Let's see if you can get the... Okay, I don't use a smoker. Um, all beginners should use a smoker. Um, the reason being, I'm one of those weird people that the bees talk to me. So when I open a hive, whether it's a hive box or do a cutout, I know where the queen is. Okay, the bees tell me where she is. Um, so every one of our hives, I can find the queen within a, less than a minute when, whenever I do, do it, um, open a hive. Or when, when I do a um, cutout, I know where she is. What do you hear? Sorry? What do you hear? It's weird. Um, so my wife says I should be able to teach people how to find a queen, mm. but I haven't been able to successfully teach people. I've shown heaps of people, like my wife for ages didn't believe I could do it until we went out together on a few different jobs. And it was like, there she is, there she is. And um, I've done it with others as well. It's do just, you see it or do you hear it? I don't know what it is. It's just like this sense. Um, <laughs> but if I use smoke mm -hmm. on the bees, the bees stop. Um, talking to me, it's like they, they stop responding in a way that tells me what the information I need to know. So um, it, it makes my life really difficult if I use smoke. Um, but beginners should always use smoke because it does calm the bees down. Um, if I get an aggressive hive, I just slow my motions down. Uh, imagine a six million dollar man, I would just go into slow motion um, and it's all good. No, the video. We uh, tested the videos earlier. They the video is running, it's just not displaying. Oh golly, it displayed yeah. earlier. Did it? Yeah, remember when you, we did the test, it's, yeah. it's, it's appeared on the screen. If you find the queen yeah. um, in a minute, um, would you then apply smoke? No, no. But like, because the way I work with the bees, the smoke just doesn't, that doesn't change what I do or doesn't change their behaviour for, for me. So now I'll just catch the queen when I, uh, sometimes I'll leave her because she might be a lay or two back, but most of the time I'll just um, yeah, work with my smoke. Um, but let's... Is that a Sorry? Yeah. I'm in quite a few bee clubs. I'm, I'm in the bee to go bee club as well. Hey! hey! And they always tell me off for not smoking, um, the, the right. Bendigo people. So I was called up, up in Mildura the, the, by the Water Authority. I do uh, work for Catchment Authorities <coughs> as well. That whole building is asbestos. The leak is actually coming from directly underneath that building. But there's a beehive up here, and on the other side, there's a beehive <coughs> in this, um, oh, I've gone a bit weird with the camera, but anyway, there's a beehive down in the far wall. There were two beehives in this little small thing, um, but literally the whole thing is asbestos. The, the owner of the property said, oh, it's fibrous and machine, I've been breaking it, but when I found the beehives, I ran away. Uh, <laughs> it's asbestos, so unfortunately, um, even though the hive was semi-exposed, I couldn't risk breaking any further and um, things. So unfortunately, the only option was they had to kill them, but it's not worth it me dying to save them. Um, yeah, I, I hate seeing my die. It's the only time I've ever had to walk away. Uh, okay, we can go to the PowerPoint again. If you know, I, I can do the videos now. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh, uh, God. Okay. Let's see. We'll see. Let's see, Let's see if it works. I've got faith in you. <laughs> yeah. I have faith in me too. I don't have faith in that damn projector. So. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah the, maybe the committee needs to um, uh, think about getting their own projector. <laughs> yeah, where were we up to? Uh, give a guess. No, uh, go over up. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that, no, number nine. Number mm -hmm. nine. All right. Because oh, I could just flick through it from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, no. Stop going now. Let's let's. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, I, I could just. Uh, all right. Flick through. It's quick. 
You know, it's like a recap, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, oh, damn, I've already given you half the answers. Okay, Let's throw some answers at me. When's the cutout finished? When, when do you think the cutout finished? That, that's one yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> Someone's a <observed. laughs> yeah, All of you could have answered that, but uh, anyway, if so, yeah, that's uh, think. Or she's known to be in the new hollow. Um, occasionally, I'll uh, just grab a bundle of bees, knowing the queen's in there, and just dump her in without actually caging her. Um, so, yeah, there's. But also, um, nice pretty picture of your queen. Um, if you look at the Australian Bee Journal, you'll have seen that, that photo this month. Um, they keep posting my photos for some reason on the front cover. Um, yeah, anyway, um, yeah, the reason I ask, where do you find the queen in a cutout? Okay, I got called to an emergency cutout a few months ago. Tree had fallen down um, over power lines. Cut out the power um, to, to some houses, and another beekeeper had rocked up, not knowing, never done a cutout before. And we, when we got there after they had already started, uh, we said, Have you got the queen? And she went, Oh, yeah, I put all the brew comb in a box, so I've got the queen. Um, you've got to remember when you expose a hive, the queen doesn't stay on the brew comb. Okay, she might run to the darkest spot she can find, whether it's on honey or whatnot. Unfortunately, in this instance, the queen ran onto honeycomb. She put honey, all the honeycomb, into a separate tub and killed the queen. Um, we, we saved the hive, but we only got one frame of brood um, out of the whole hive. Um, so you've also got to remove all the comb from the old hive. If you leave any comb left, um, when you come back to collect the hive at night, a few days later, um, you'll find bees on the old comb. Um, you want to. Once you've finished doing all your cut out, clean out the area, get rid of all the comb. Okay? Um, we, on, we do it on in, all our external cutouts. We'll leave the hive set up near the old entrance. Not near the old hive, near the old entrance, because the t hive entrance can be sometimes two metres from where the comb is. So you put it near the old entrance so the returning foragers more easily reorientate to the new hive. Um, and then a week later you collect the hive at night and you've got all the bees um, or you've been backed um, the remaining bees. Okay, um, hive is then relocated to quarantine. Okay, it's not all fun and games, but it is. I love, love, love cutting out. So now we can go do the other videos and you'll, you'll love these videos as long as they work this time. I've got my just... I'm trying to talk a little bit faster too. No, you've got lots of time. Yeah, um, normally I can talk for hours. So, where do you want to start? Okay, so uh, let's go the emergency cutout first. Yeah. That's the one that I just talked about, the tree that came down. Um, okay. Oh, you can turn the volume off though. So people can hear that volume. <laughs> um, so that's my wife there, um, working on the... Um, this is the, the lady that started the cutout um, and got quite a lesson. Um, I can be quite abrupt when I get there and see someone totally screwing it up. And she hadn't caution, put any caution tape up because I was concerned more about her that if someone decided to sue, she, you know, she hadn't secured the area, she hadn't done anything. She killed the queen, as I said, unfortunately. Um, because she got in there and thought, oh, I've just got to get everything out quickly, just dump it all. With emergency cutouts or any other cutout, you've got to slow down. Um, this, you've got to be methodical and you've just got to work your way through it. If you try to rush, you're going to screw it up and you're going to kill the hive. Okay? You, you don't, the aim is to save the bees, not kill the bees. Okay? So, um, and that bucket there that she's got, that tub, that's the tub where the queen died in, unfortunately. Um, yeah, but the, the end result is we got, um, got them to quarantine, fed them right up. There was only four viable um, eggs in that after she decimated it, and only one of them took. Thankfully, she mated it successfully, and so the, queen, uh, the hive is now going strong. Um, you talked about feeders earlier. Every hive we do a cut out on, we'll put a feeder leader on top when we get to quarantine. Okay. Um, so this feeder, we can open the hive in winter and um, feed the bees. 
because it's got a little hole that doesn't really let out much heat. It's got a mesh so the bees can't come out at you. You can put dry stuff through the mesh or liquids in there. Um, that way we can feed up the bees during um, any, any time. Oh yeah, because she damaged it so badly, the, that's all um, hive beetle larvae, um, all that wiggling around there. Um, the hive got really weakened, um, so often after a cutout you need to swap out the baseboard uh, after about a week, otherwise you're going to get um, wax moth or hive beetle really badly. Um, if it's um, been done poorly and it's weak. Um, so, yeah, so you can just see them, it's icky. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so we can go to the next video now. Mm -hmm. so. Was that from a box that she brought to put these into? So, that's my own hive box. That's your own So, I, I, um, it's saved. Like, I, I reframed and everything. Uh -huh. She just laid the cone into a hive box and thought that was good enough, she didn't frame them up or anything. Let's start at number one. Okay. Okay, this was one I did in Gisborne for the cancel, uh, Mason Rangers cancel, and it's in that tree. They, for, for some silly reason, no h &S reasons, on the cancel part, they wouldn't let me put a scaffold in up and pull it out of the tree while it was standing. So had, they, had to, they insisted the tree had to be felled. Um, there's always obviously a risk of killing the queen when um, the tree is felled, but um, in this instance we didn't. What was really funny is all the tree cutters just stood around for mm. a couple of minutes after the tree um, fell down. I was happily in my bee suit, I was all good. <laughs> <laughs> then I saw them running. <laughs> Five minutes later I get a call from their boss. Um, the tree guys aren't going to come back today. <laughs> they got too many stings. <laughs> I offered them bee suits and everything, but they went, no, we, we don't need bee suits. They're tough guys. Um, and in, in a hive, um, a feral hive, you see all these weird patterns. It's not like in your hive that you open up that it's just all nice and straight. The bees will just fill the space however they want, and it's awesome. Like, if you ever get a chance to either see a cutout or do a cutout, give it a go, um, but have someone more experienced with you. I often take People who have never done cutouts with me, I, I don't mind. Um, you know, uh, always happy to let new people see. But they make some amazing structures. You, like in the wild, it's just it's really awesome. Um, just showing, got the queen in. Um, she ran deeper into the tree, but my arms weren't long enough, so I actually had to um, cut a hole lower down. And the only time I use smoke to I like, use smoke just to push her up. Once um, she came out, I was then able to grab her because just purely because my arm wasn't long enough. <laughs> so there we go. Um, and then this day it was actually raining when we were doing this because the council said, no, we're taking the tree down regardless. You're either there or you're not. And I often get those sort of calls. Uh, so I use bits of the tree just to um, rain, rain shield. Um, then. The, the next night, because it's a public area, I came and collected the bees. Um, usually I'd like to leave them there for a week, so they've got time to attach the comb to the frames. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So you've got the queen in that box? Yeah, uh, in that cage, in the box. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't release the queen until I get her to quarantine. Oh, Kaisen Defensive. Um, the cans, again, another job for cancel. They got lots of complaints about this being like stinging people um, every time someone um, parked next to the tree. Um, it's an old uh, elm, elm tree, I think they said. Uh, but the, I wasn't allowed to cut the tree down or whatnot. The tree had to remain standing at the end. So you'll see I cut a peekaboo hole. It's about 20 centimetres odd around. Um, to give me access. All the old, like elms, oaks, poplars, they're all hollow inside. Um, if you don't know, the, the, those European trees, they're most, mostly hollow. Um, but they're designed that way. The, the tr the, that whole trunk was chock-a-block full of bees. Obviously my resolution is not that great, but uh, a lovely guys. Seriously, I, I enjoy doing that one. Um, finished at sort of like 2 o'clock in the morning. But, 
because um, they didn't want the tree felled, I had to cut it in a way that the piece that I cut out could then just be put back in and they could then make it look like I hadn't even been there. So I get asked to do some weird things at times. This one? Yep, mini. Most aggressive hive I've ever had. Uh, it's a metre cubed. So one metre by one metre by one metre. Um, huge hive. Uh, so aggressive it wasn't funny. Um, uh, as I said, I don't use smoke. Mm -hmm. I actually went back to the car and got smoke, and even then, it didn't do it, did nothing. They were just so angry, really angry hive. But a huge hive had been there for 15 years. Oh, wow. So um, her husband died some like 15 years ago, and she just let the bees do what they wanted. Um, she didn't worry about it. It was in a little shed out the back. Um, but it wasn't until they started stinging her while she was mowing the lawn that she decided it was time for them to, to move on. Um, one of her grandchildren is anaphylactic and she, the grandchild couldn't, couldn't um, visit her anymore. What so, variety of these were they? Um, the, those Italians. Yeah. I, I love carny islands. Uh, Italians are like the good time girls. They'll produce honey really fast but eat it as quick. Mm -hmm. um, whereas the Carney Islands, they live a little bit longer than the Italians, don't need as many bees and they actually store up, um, but they don't produce honey as quickly as Italians. Do you find them more aggressive though? What's that? The Carney Islands. Carney Islands, they're the calmest bees you can find. Like, so much calmer than Italians. You can pat them. Yeah, I love Carney Islands, but obviously I get all sorts of breeds doing what I'm doing. Um, Okay, uh, this one was, this one got called Point Cook um, Car Crash because we're in a street that's only like 100 metres long and right in the middle of the street, um, someone managed to roll their car down the street and crash into a tree out the front of the house. Like, you know, how do you get up enough speed in a, like, such a short stretch? Uh, it was an open plant house, so we put up plastic sheeting, um, the painter's master sheets, around to isolate the area from the rest of the house. That way we've minimised where the bees can go, um, which is um, better. Uh, I've got a friend, Tom. Um, he's the only one that's ever put stingless, Australian stingless bees on almonds. Um, he had worked with Trevor Monson, um, the almond king guy. Um, you'll note, when I cut, uh, so I'm on the second floor, I cut along the eye joists, so that, and, and I rolled the carpet back, so that when we finish the job, we can just place that there, um, back down, piece back down, they can roll the carpet back over and no one would ever know that we can cut open their floor. Thank you, Alex. Um, so, you'll find on internal cutouts, bees will head to the windows, so you'd want to not have um, blankets or anything or um, blinds over the windows, you want them to go to the windows. That way they don't go out the exit and go off foraging again because they can go, go out foraging for like three hours. So the more that bees mm -hmm. stay in the room with you, when you come to bee vacuum in, it makes things so much easier um, because there's a lot less bees to hang around and wait for. But they made some, it makes some amazing comb. Again, always catch the queen. I'm just watching the clock as well. <laughs> So that hive we managed to get two full boxes out of. Um, the queen's in there somewhere off on the left. There we go. There you can see her there. See? Mm. Uh, be beautiful lady. So, an Italian. There's so many Italian feral hives, seriously. And breed like there's no tomorrow. Um, my Italian friends say it's the same as the actual <laughs> 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 okay, um, when you bee back bees on an internal cutout, ignore the ones on the windows and that until the end. You vacuum inside the hive and you vacuum the entrance area um, first. So again, you're avoiding trying to let the bees go out back into the real world. The ones on the window aren't going to go back into the hive. So you can worry them about them right at the end. Um, so you'll see there Tom. Um, Tom's a bit of an odd sort. I've got to force him to put protective equipment on. Um, you'll see he hasn't got gloves or anything. Um, yeah, he's just 
in saying that he gets so many things but he doesn't care. Uh, it drives me nuts. <laughs> okay. Telstra? Telstra, why not? This was in New South Wales. I get called into the lower part of New South Wales as well um, because uh, Telstra gets us to go up in the New South Wales as well. That's my wife pulling out. Such a cute little hive in a Telstra pit, and you'll be amazed how often we're pulling hives out of Telstra pits. That's, that's probably the 10th this season out of Telstra pits. Now, a word of caution with Telstra pits. We're the only ones um, with a contractor legally allowed to open Telstra pits to pull out a beehive. I've never dogged a beekeeper in for opening a Telstra pit. Um, I, I don't care if you do it myself, personally. But keep in mind, if you, Telstra catches you opening a um, Telstra pit without permission, you will no longer have a house. Uh, they did successfully sue one person for opening a um, Telstra pit without permission. They've got thousands of dollars worth of cables in there and you can cut uh, people's, the whole neighborhood's <coughs> lines. Um, the person they sued did lose their house, they lost everything. Um, so it's your call, I'm not going to dog you in or anything, but um, I, it's, it's, it's just a word of caution. Um, Telstra doesn't take kindly to unpromised um, people like in their kids. I know it happens, but yeah, it doesn't, um, it, it's not worth the risk. Oh, this one took 12 hours. Um, and that brick pillar is holding up 25% of the roof. Okay. Um, it's like uh, the hive had been there for six years. And um, obviously, I didn't want the house to fall down on me while I was working. Um, luckily, I pretend to know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I knew what I, how I could take the bricks out to um, think. Weirdly enough, when you see the finished product, you see almost the bricks out, but you've got to take them out in an order so that if things start to move, you can stop. <laughs> but if you don't do it in the right order, um, wow. you'll... Oh my God. Um, yeah, you could have a disaster. Maybe $8 an hour is far too cheap. <laughs> <laughs> They must have loved bees if they were willing to pay you for 12 hours and, not, and not tell you to destroy them. Yeah, yeah, they, they, and you'd be amazed, like, it was a huge hive, and the Italians again, they had no honey whatsoever, we're, we're in the middle of spring, and there's literally no honey in that hive, it's all brewed, like literally, they, um, Italians are so good at breeding up fast um, and just eating everything. Um, so the, the queen was a few layers back, so I just had to work slowly and methodical until I got to her layer. Um, and then once I got to her layer um, and got high enough to grab her, I grabbed her. And there was a really big storm. Bees get really angry as a storm approaches. Um, so the only time I get stung these days is if the storm's about to hit. Um, it's just, and I swell up so bad. <laughs> um, but it was, almost 50% drone brood in that hive. Um, so they were getting geared up to swarm. Um, doing the cutout, obviously, I disrupted that whole process. Um, so let's see, we've got the queen yet again. Um, How many boxes were there? <laughs> there was two boxes because I, um, there was a lot of waste that I just um, couldn't put in. If you've got to make a choice between drone brood and worker brood, um, when you're doing a cutout, you save the worker brood. The drone brood's just a mouth to feed and you've weakened the hive. Like you've gone in, you've moved the house from one house to another, put it all back in the wrong order, and then they've got to deal with drones coming around and just eating all their resources. Um, you don't need to put too much drone brood into a hive. Uh, I know it seems mean that you're going to kill some drones, but it's better than that than killing the whole hive. Okay? Um, I, so that box was a two hive um, cut out. I put a third box on after I was finished because again, mid spring, and we had some really nice days coming up after the storm had passed. They managed to fill the top box with honey, even though, it, even though I'd done the cut out and they had no honey in the um, cut out. Within a week, when I came to collect it, that hive, I had to use our honey hoist because I couldn't lift it because they put so much honey into the top box. Mm -hmm. Did you, did you um, 
Did you put Braun Gun in the top box for them? No, they or were themselves foundation. Plastic, we used plastic foundation that we roll with wax and they had drawn it and filled it with honey in a week. Mm. Oh, it was just crazy. Um, but again, Italians, um, they're fast. Um, so, and, and what would a brick restoration like that cost? I mean, that's, that caveat would have been like 500 or $1,000 or something. Yeah, it? it was. Because we also, if we've got to take bricks out, because the teeth on my little brick mortar cutter are so mm. expensive, we charge an extra $165 to um, thing. So, but we don't put the bricks back. Um, it's cheaper for them to get a home handyman to, or a brickie to, than to pay us our $88. Um, yeah, brickies and home handyman are usually around $50 an hour mark. So it's cheaper just to get them, someone else to do it. Or they can do it themselves if they feel confident enough. Ocean Fun? Oh, mm -hmm. ocean, this was Ocean Grove. Um, they had two hives in this, in this um, wall. Okay, so they've got the one up there, and then they've got one between the um, floors. Now, while I was doing the cutout, I went to grab the queen, and just as I went to grab her, she flew off. And I was like, oh no, right? Um, but, but thankfully, she flew only a few metres down to a rose bush, and then once there was a ball of bees there, I went, ah, there she is. But, you know, I've had it one instance where I opened a hive at home, and there were some supersedure cells in the hive, so the queen must have known she was going to depart. She was on the top bars of the um, mm -hmm. hive. When I took the lid off, she flew off into the distance. Mm -hmm. um, but there were already queen cells, not, mm -hmm. not um, swarm cells, but supersedure cells in the hive. So it's almost like she knew. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, she's so, in the middle of a like, summer, and she's laying on eggs, and she's all swollen up. Would she still fly? No, no. not if they're feeding. So she was ready to? Yeah, she was ready to. Yeah, it was. Um, so you'll see I set up a frame to sit the hive on, um, and mm -hmm. that's kind of thing. That's the second hive. It, so the second hive was in the floors between the houses. Both I did these cutouts a week apart, and both were on 40 degree days. So it was sweltering, um, but occasionally you've just got to do them because the homeowners um, got sick of their dog. They had a little black pug. And bees obviously attracted to black, yeah. and the pug get, getting stung, uh, stung. So mm -hmm. they just said, if you take them, good. If you don't, kill them. <laughs> and so, yeah, um, you just do what you have to do. When I got there, it had been um, dusted. That's uh, white residue. So the bee line had killed them. And so even if they kill the queen, there's probably eggs deeper in the hive. So they make a new queen and they get going. Um, so that pest controller will charge them every time they come out. Mm -hmm. he, over five years, the lady paid over thousand dollars on a job that would have only cost two hundred dollars or so if I done it because it's only two hours to do a hive that size. Anyway, um, but yeah, pest controllers aren't always the best option. And also, with an unguarded hive on a really hot day, the wax starts to melt mm -hmm. and you get honey stains down your walls. So. Okay, sometimes the bees get it wrong as well. Um, in this instance, they moved into a um, wall that was only a few mil thick um, with this, uh, the render over the top of it. The day I was meant to go there was 44 degrees and the, uh, the honey was just dripping out, unfortunately. If I'd been a day earlier, I would have been able to save the hive, but uh, I got all the bees that were alive, but the, Comb had melted. Um, it was just yeah, unfortunate. And the one on the right, they was great for spring. It was just a flower pot upside down, but it became a hot box um, mm. when the weather got really hot. Um, so that's a pile of dead bees on the bottom. There was probably maybe 500 bees left alive, including the queen. Thankfully, we nursed that one back to health. Yay! Almost done. I, I told you I was trying to watch the clock and then you told me I had all this time. Okay. And of course I'm perfect. You've worked that out by now. Okay. Um, but you may have seen me in um, different magazines, sitting up a tree with a queen cage in my hands, no safety equipment. Uh, I do stupid things too. Okay. Um, you'll see the queen cage. That's just me catching a swarm. Um, catching, catching the queen of the swarm. And then you can go to that lucky last video and then done. Alright. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>
observe? Yep. Okay. Because I'm so observant, right? You'll, 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 um, the, everyone else will see it straight away. I'm, I'm trying to release the queen, wondering, okay, where's the queen? Where's the queen? If you're really observant, you'll see the queen <coughs> actually walks up my hand. I don't notice. <laughs> she then walks down the other side and down into the box. And I'm going, come on, queenie, come out, come out. Where's the queenie? Totally. Didn't notice the queen at all, and then I'm going, oh, where's the queen? <laughs> Normally, I know exactly where she is, but in that instance, I was tired. <laughs> so there we go. Um, everyone still awake? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs>